All right, good afternoon. Good to see everybody. Uh, make a wish. Uh, uh, Toby Wells was out there today with us after practice. Uh, he's going to be champion of the game uh, this week. Uh, his brother Jack was out there as well, broke us down at the end. It's always a pleasure to do that. I know our players uh, certainly enjoy that as well. Uh, there was also a high school coaches of the year. They were out there, uh, coaches of the week. We had seven of those guys out there. And then also the coach of the year, uh, Derek Leonard, uh, Rochester High School. Um, just won, what, I believe, nine championships, not nine and zero in championship games. Uh, just can't seem to beat his dad, Ken, though, because Ken beat him. He's 0-2 against his dad the last couple of years. I had to throw it in there for, for Ken. I'm uh, friends with Ken. Sacred Heart Griffin's retired now, but uh, used to recruit that high school uh, back when I was at Mizzou a long time ago. So uh, shout out to him. Uh, injury report, uh, just an uh, update. You'll see that uh, Tyler Scott uh, had some hamstring tightness. We just pulled him out of, out of practice today uh, for that, and we'll evaluate him tomorrow and see where he is. Valus Jones has an illness. Um, and EQ, you saw earlier in the week, he's going to be week to week. He has a pack. Uh, so we'll see where that is. Uh, again, we're excited, super excited to be back at uh, Soldier Field and back at home in front of the Bears fans. Um, you know, the week of preparation was good. Uh, leading off the bye week and uh, the preparation and the, and the improvements that we want to make and uh, uh, certainly uh, like where we are right now. And uh, with that, open up to questions. What happened to St. Brown? Uh, his peck. Yeah, during practice, you know, blocking somebody. You know, so we'll see where it is week to week. Do you expect Bayless to be available Sunday? Yeah, we'll, we'll see where it is. We got to really see where it is tomorrow because um, he's, he, you know, he's sick right now. You know, so again, I'll get more updates on that. I don't know the severity of that. Uh, we'll see where he goes and how it goes through today and then into tomorrow. Into tomorrow. Strain does that put on you now trying to figure out the receiving core with obviously three guys? Yeah, I mean, you just got to be, you know, you got to have your backup plans and, you know, you got to be ready to go. Uh, but uh, we'll see where it goes and um, we'll be ready. How do you weigh some of the performances with Justin where you get a, lot, a good statistical output? Like the Vikings game, he had decent numbers. The, the Broncos game, he had very good statistical production, but also the turnovers. The turnovers balance that out for you, or is one bigger than the other? Yeah, the turnovers. Th those are the things that you have to eliminate. You know, you know, a perfect game for a quarterback, any quarterback, is zero turnovers. You know, and that's protecting the football, and that's the guy that has the ball every single snap, and he's got to do a great job with that. And uh, to me, that's that starts with that. And uh, then, obviously, uh, avoiding a sacks and negative plays and operation and all the things that comes along with the hardest position in sport. You know, and we recognize that. And, you know, so that, that's where it is. Man, with your, with your running backs, when you guys, just, just philosophically speaking, when you guys enter a game, you have obviously a plan of who's going to get the first few series, then moving in. Do you kind of project what could happen if one guy gets a hot hand? I'm just curious kind of how your overall philosophy is in terms of using those backs, in terms of prepping during the week and then flexibility in the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, you always go with your first 15 and those guys are going to get touches uh, during that first 15 or 20 plays. Um, and then you look and see where it is, you know, and, and uh, um, some guys get certain type of plays, you know, uh, inside, outside, uh, pass plays that are designed to go to them or they're maybe primary of the route. Maybe they don't, they're not, you know, the coverage takes it away and then we go somewhere else. But um, you certainly have all those plans. And then you see where it is, you know, a guy rips off a run or, He's doing a really good job. Uh, you know, you, you start feeding that guy, and that's kind of how it works. And uh, but uh, we certainly like having three guys that we can go to. So yeah. with the with the Vikings game, was that an example where Roshan was just playing at a level where you guys are like, let's just keep him keep him in there? Like it wasn't planned during the week that he was going to potentially play that much. Yeah, you know, it's one of those operations where he was he was pretty hot. You know, he did a nice job, and uh, we th we liked his energy and the way he was playing, and uh, he certainly looked good in that game. With the Lions and Aiden Hutchinson, how did you view the ups and downs for Darnell Wright in that matchup last time you guys played him? Yeah, we thought it was good. You know, we thought he really operated well most of the game. You know, and, and he, he would tell you that he wished he had that last play back too. Uh, but uh, overall, I thought he operated well. You know, that's a heck of a pass rusher. Um, he's got a heck of a motor, one of the best motors in ball. And, uh, you know, you got to be ready to go every single snap. And, and he knows that. And uh, it's going to be a big challenge for him this week. Uh, but overall, it, it was solid, you know. Um, technique's got to be great every single snap. You can't take one off because, you know, he doesn't take a playoff. So uh, we just got to be mindful of that. Matt, given, given the 
the number of good pass rushers Darnell has faced this year. How do you evaluate his season as a whole up until now? I think it's been solid. You know, it's been solid. You know, when you look at a pass rusher, you know, they all bring a different way. You know, and that's what the thing is. You know, it's like being a corner and you're covering receivers. It's it's same thing, uh, being a tackle. You know, you're you have to cover this pass rusher from getting to the quarterback, and and how you do that is different with each guy. You know, and some guys are they don't love the bull rush. Some guys got you know a knack to really you know move you through the move area and, and get on top of you and get around the corner. So uh, every guy's different, and you got to study them and you got to work with work with what works for you against that guy. And uh, that's what he's dealing with right now, being a rookie. And he'll figure that out, you know, as he goes. And he'll play these guys over and over again, certainly in division. And um, he's doing a nice job of figuring it out. And Javon, Javon Dexter came in here with a little bit of a tough deal publicly because he was not Jalen Carter. He was, you know, a, a, another guy. What, what has he done with what he's done this year? Can you has that changed or confirmed what his ceiling is? Because it's so hard to tell, like when you don't have raw numbers or you know. Yeah. Uh, and to, to, say, to say exactly how he's doing from your vantage point, what what is what has he done to uh, either, like I said, confirm or or change what you think he can do in the NFL? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know that's a good question, Mark. I would say that uh, you know when he um, his pad level is right and his his uh, his get off is right, he can be very powerful and he, like I say, dent the pocket. He does a really good job with that. Uh, we don't put ceilings on guys. Uh, we love where his floor is. You know where he's building from. And uh, he certainly created that floor and moved that up, you know, a notch or two uh, going into these last, what, four games where the, his pressure rate's starting to go up. And he's getting more opportunities. We're giving him more opportunities in there. And uh, we certainly like where he is. Uh, but, again, with any any rookie or any anybody, that it's just based on consistency now. So he just got to really keep bringing it every single week. How much do you follow the possibility of you guys getting the number one pick in the draft through the Carolina trade? And for example, last night, New England winning helps you guys a lot in that effort. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really follow it uh, right now. Uh, I'm focusing on Detroit, you know, and our team, you know, getting better, our football team getting better, and what we're doing here, you know, into the red zone and into our preparation in 48 hours. So I really don't follow it that much. Do you uh, do you allow yourself to sort of dream out what these five games could be if you can if you can get hot here? No, I, I, I focus on this game. You know, that's really what you got to do. You got to be where your feet are and focusing on the challenges that are in front of you. And we're playing a heck of a football team. You know, it's a really good football team in a lot in um, a, a lot of aspects. And uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us. But like I said, we're excited to have them at home and we're excited for this game.